Oh. Wow, it's been too long. Um, hello, this is me. Is my exposure good? Might not be. Let's check it. Okay, hello. Um, it's been a long time. I'm in a new surrounding, which is cool. Um, it's Josiah Pierce here. Um, wanted to make a video about this for a long time and didn't really get an opportunity to because I got married and have been super duper busy for many months. I've moved, I've done all kinds of stuff that I don't want to deal with ever again. But I'm here um, and I wanted to talk about why I have to make things for me. Um, I hear this all the time in the creative community and I think it's a real misunderstanding and kind of complaint that creatives, myself included, need to get to grips with. But one of the things I see all the time when I'm talking to friends or um, dealing with clients is as creatives, we kind of forget the fact that we are selling goods as a service, right? We're selling um, us as a service to the client. Yes, there are deliverables in play, but really what we're doing is making something for someone else at the end of the day. And so I hear this a lot and it's it basically boils down to um, the client didn't do what I wanted them to do. They are altering you know what I made, what I my vision is being altered um, because the client has all these you know ideas that are either um, not industry standard or they're even you know referred to as like dumb or whatever. And I think that's really damaging. Um, because it's giving yourself as the creative the mindset that everything you make is for you. Um, and to an extent, we need to be designing to taste, right? We need to be designing things that we think are good. But at the end of the day, we're making something for someone else. And so one of the things that I see a lot in myself is burnout from that. So you start making all of these things for clients that you love and then they get tweaked, right? Like uh, all my work gets tweaked, you know? Um, I'm not at the level of, you know, Paula Cher where she just shows something and the client's just like, yeah, that's Paula Cher. Even Paula Cher though probably still has this problem and she talks about that in several interviews. So what do you do to combat that? What do I do to combat that, right? What I do is I make things for me, right? Like this YouTube channel makes me no money. It has not yet or probably ever will make me famous. Um, I don't do it for that. Um, and much like many creatives on this platform, like we make things here because we need to make things, right? I'm the creative director of my YouTube. Okay? I'm the creative director of my brand. I'm the creative director of anything that I make um, for free, typically. Um, I'm the creative director of a startup that I do, you know, so on and so forth. So when, when I deal with this burnout of, I make this like perfect design in my head to the client and they tweak it and they kind of uh, manipulate it to, into something that's not what it was intended to be, Instead of going, oh gosh, like my client, like they suck. Like I hate that they messed up my work, my art. Like instead I go, okay, well they're paying me to make something for them. They're not paying me necessarily to make art, right? And so how I combat that is I make things. Um, my wife laughs all the time because there's some days, you know, after work where I'm like, I've just got to mow the lawn. Like I love mowing the lawn because I make something instantly and I can look at it, right? Well, I, I don't make it, but like I can start up the lawnmower and boom, my lawn's clean and I can look at it and I'm like, yes, I hit the done button, right? Like if you don't do that creatively, you will wither because you can have clients. I mean, I have plenty that you feel like the done button is a month away and all of a sudden it's a year from that moment and you're like, it's still not finished and you will, you will struggle, you will struggle. And so my encouragement to designers and creatives is like, make, make things for free for yourself, 
create little projects that you enjoy. Um, it doesn't even have to be designed. It doesn't even have to be like in your field. Just make something. Um, and if you're not inclined to be like that, then I kind of question if you're in the right field because like there's a reason creatives do what they do. And there's a reason like I freelance instead of work for a full-time company is because I love making things. And I, I don't want to get bored making one kind of thing for a, a company over and over and over for the rest of my life. I love the diversity that freelancing can offer. So that's me. That's how I feel about it. Um, let me know in the comments um, what you feel is like your thing you have to do. Uh, whether it's pottery, photography, painting, drawing, like what do you do? What are you making? Um, I think one of the things that really um, humbled me early on is like I realized how my talent really wasn't up to snuff in so many different ways. And so I just started creating. I started working on Saturdays for myself you know, making things. I started live streaming design sessions and my abilities improved. And so I want to know what you guys are doing um, in that vein. Um, I'm happy to ask, or I'm happy to ask questions, but I'm also happier to answer questions or just continue the conversation. Um, so I'd love that. Um, but yeah, that's me. I'm a maker. If I'm not making things, I'm not happy. 